بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين So I wanted to discuss this uh, word Kalimatullah This has always interested me Like what could it mean the word Kalimatullah And in the Quran it doesn't give a definition that What does it mean the word Kalimatullah And it has only been used for the Prophet Jesus and this word has a high significance for the Christians but um, in, within the Quran there isn't much discussion uh, what does it mean the word the word of God like what does it mean for Prophet Jesus to be the word of God so this is the book the Islamic Jesus a very good book by Mustafa Okloy I'm going to read this uh, almost three four pages and the last page I'm not going to read because uh, it requires the whole of the book so unless you have read the book you will not be able to understand what he's saying in the Jewish Christianity so Bismillah the term word or kalima is used three times in the Quran for Jesus in the first he is called a word from God who will be confirmed by Yahya or John the Baptist in the second, we hear angels during the accusation telling Mary, Mary, God gives you news of a word from him, those name will be Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, who will be held in honor in this world and the next, who will be one of those who brought near to God. The third is a verse that calls Christians to stop saying God is three, to acknowledge God is only one God. It is it then it then explains the nature of Messiah. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only the messenger of God and his word, which he caused into Mary and his spirit from him. The title Messenger of God or Rasulullah is very common in the Quran, as it used for all prophet from Abraham to Moses to Muhammad. However, Jesus, as we can see, is not only a prophet. He is also word from God or even word of God and also a spirit from God. Since both of these terms, word and spirit, are never used for any other human being in the Quran, they have generated curiosity for centuries. Christians such as John of Damascus, who read the Quran often, saw in them a reflection of their own word Christology based upon the famous opening lines of the fourth gospel in the beginning was the world and the world was with god and the word was god and the word became flesh and dwell among us a modern day christian scholar even wrote about the christian potential of quran based upon this apparent parallelism islamic scholars however have traditionally given a more modest meaning to jesus being the divine word. This term they reasoned only referred to the miraculous creation of Jesus without his biological father and with God's creative word B. We see this creative word in Quranic conversation between Mary and Gabriel which takes place during the accumulation. Accordingly Mary asks how can I have a son when no man has ever touched me and Gabriel responds it will be so. God creates whatever He wills and He decides on something. He just says to it, be and it is. Another Quranic verse that gives weight to this view that Jesus is the divine word only in the sense of being created by the created, creative word be is the one that compares Him to Adam. The likeness of Jesus in God's sight is the same as Adam. He created him from earth and then he said to him, Be, and he was. Notably, such a modest meaning to the word was given in much forgotten ancient Christian texts as well. The Armenian Book of Infancy, yet another apocryphal gospel that was popular among Eastern Christians but did not make its way into the New Testament. In its narration of the Ecunication, the this gospel reads, The word of God penetrated into Mary by her ear. As noted by a Catholic scholar, this sounds very similar to the Quranic statement. 
he cast it a word into Mary and see and seems suggest only a creative word. However, in the Islamic tradition, there are also some hints and some overt comments that Jesus was the word of God in a more elevated sense as well. These hints come first of all from the Quran, which suggests that Jesus had an unusual nature, not merely in terms of his birth, but also in other miraculous aspects of his life. He spoke in his cradle and perhaps even in his mother's womb, depending on how one reads the passage about Mary's pain births. He also gave life to inanimate matter by, by raising the dead and breathing into clay figures and making them alive. Especially the latter puzzled Especially the latter miracle puzzled some Muslim exegetes for creating life is power ascribed only to God. One of them, a Razi, asked, Is it that God had disposed a special power in Jesus so that whenever he breathed into a thing it became alive? Or is it that God created life in that thing when Jesus breathed into it in order for God to manifest his miracles? A Razi then opted for the second option, but added that since Jesus was generated from the breath of Gabriel into Mary, it is not improbable that the breath of Jesus could infuse life and spirit. In the overall Quranic story of Jesus, Jesus there is something else that is curious. When the Quran narrates the stories of prophets in detail, it often mentions their flaws, which the Islamic tradition conceptualizes as Zala or lapse. Adam ate the fruit from the forbidden tree, for example, or Moses hit the man and killed him, and Muhammad neglected a blind man searching for wisdom, which led to his censor by the Quran. The Jesus of Quran, however, has no Zala, no mistake, no lapse. He is simply flawless. No wonder Mary was heralded with a faultless son. And Jesus himself said, God has made me blessed wherever I am. Besides the Quran, a hadith found in the collection of Imam Bukhari also implies an exceptional nature for Jesus. When any human being is born, Satan touches him at both sides of the body with his two fingers. The Prophet Muhammad reportedly says here, except Jesus, the son of Mary. Based on such clues, some Muslim commentators, including Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad, have suggested that Jesus was word of God in a higher sense than the mere creative word in this generation. But in exactly what sense? Nishapuri, a Persian Shi uh, Shiite scholar of 14th century, has offered an answer. First, by defining a perfect man in union with God, then noting Jesus was especially favored among all other prophets and saints by being called Word because he was created with the inherent capacity for this perfection. Two centuries earlier, another Shiite scholar, Sheikh Tabrasi, uh, had discussed the meaning of Jesus', Jesus speech in the cradle and suggested that God had perfected his reason even at even that age, revealing to him what he uttered. Accordingly, Jesus was not merely receiving occasional revelation like other prophets. Every word of his was revelation by God. While various Shiite and Sufis have been interested in such speculation about the nature of Jesus, Orthodox Sunni commentators have often been more cautious on this delicate matter of theology. One notable 20th century figure, Sayyid Qutb, those radical political views are only a part of his exegetical work, pondered the meaning of word of God. Only to conclude, this like other matters belong to the unseen, which cannot be exactly known. Human reason, he argued, in a typical orthodox Sunni line of thought, was not created with the capacity to comprehending such mysteries which could lead only to which could only lead to pointless speculation among contemporary muslim thinker one who has ventured 
into such trajectories uh, among contemporary Muslim thinker, one who ventured into such territory of mysteries to offer a notable higher uh, version of Islamic Christology is uh, Hajj Muhammad. An American philosopher, a convert, and a professor at the Imam Khomeini Education and Research Institute in Iran. Lexin Howers uh, apparently builds upon the tradition started by Tabarsi uh, that Jesus may be the word of God not as merely a creative word but also as a word of revelation. In this view, unlike the Prophet Muhammad, who was a normal human being who just occasionally uh, received God's revelation, Jesus became the revelation itself, the parallel to Jesus in Islam thus becoming not the Prophet Muhammad but the Quran. When one recalls that some key Muslim defenders of the uncreated Quran doctrine also saw the Torah and the Gospel as uncreated as well, the latter of which in this interpretation would be Jesus himself. One gets an Islamic Christology not extremely far from Christian Christology. Here you have a Jesus as the uncreated pre-existing world. Add to this that the same doctrine saw the God's attribute including his word as not he but not other than he and there emerges an interesting theological bridge between Islam and Christianity. Still. Yet still, this higher Quranic world theology would not make Jesus divine in the sense of making him an object of worship, as some Christians have suggested, uh, as some Christians have suggested have since the time of John of Damascus. Muslim, after all, do not worship the Quran, even if they consider it as the uncreated word of God. That is why, as the Muslim academic Muhammad Ayub once rightly observed, Muslim may agree with the opening statement of Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God, but they cannot agree with what follows, and the Word was God. Nevertheless, a higher Quranic word theology puts Jesus somewhere between human beings and God, somewhere one would suggest on the same level with angels. It is therefore perhaps telling that in its rejection of Christian doctrine of the divinity of Christ, the Quran mentions him in the same breath with the angel near to God. The Messiah would never disdain to be the servant to God, nor would the angels near to him. If any do disdain to worship him and, go arro and grow arrogant, he will in any case gather them all to him. The Messiah was likened to an angel who the Messiah was likened to an angel, also by the great 12th century Sufi Masar Ibn Arabi, who wrote poems concerning Jesus. Ibn Arabi focused on Jesus being Spirit of God and took this as Jesus' power to breathe life into the dead yet as with God's involvement, just as angel Gabriel breathed into his mother. Jesus came forth, rising the dead because he was a divine spirit in this the quick uh, in this the quickening was of god while the blowing itself came from jesus just as the blowing was from gabriel while the word was of god so the in the next portion it uh, oh, there is almost a page left but it concerns the relationship of islam with uh, jewish christianity and this is the thesis of this book so unless you have read what uh, precedes this uh, topic, you will not get an idea of what is going on. Therefore, I have um, tried to exclude it and have not included in this uh, video. So thanks a lot. This just um, All of this just gives you an idea, at least some idea, that what could it mean uh, for Jesus uh, as word of God in Islam. Obviously, in Christianity, it has... Uh, there is a whole concept of Jesus being the word of God and somehow being divine and the part of the trinity but in Islam there is no such thing but still he is uh, held in that position as the word of God 
And as for my pronunciation, some words were almost butchered, so I do apologize for that. So thanks again.